Yeah, NFL, here we go. Notable games, Lions, Bears. Oh my. In Chicago, Lions, three point favorites outdoors uh, at nine and three, still very much alive for that, you know, sneaking in maybe number one overall seed, depending upon. Bucks, Falcons, down in Atlanta. That division is wild. And that game on CBS. And Bills, Chiefs also on CBS. Man, Bills coming out of a bye. Chiefs need that one. That's a, that's a, boy, that's an interesting spot. Broncos, Chargers, CBS. That is a, fa losers out, right? That almost feels like an elimination game. Eagles, Cowboys, huge game there. And Titans, Dolphins, now on Monday Night Football. Look at the Dolphins. 13 and a hook. Wow. All right. Let me get my uh, guys in. I'm Eric Casillas. My Clore, Zach Simony. Um, what's the early NFL line you want to jump on now because it's not going to be there later? All I know is I've matched with one of you, and I don't know what you like. So, uh, Zach, you're first. I'm going with the Cleveland Browns minus three against the Jacksonville Jaguars. We know with most teams in the NFL, they are a quarterback injury away from being subpar or mediocre. I think that's what we're going to see with this Jacksonville Jaguars team now that Trevor Lawrence is going to be questionable with his high ankle. Spring, probably doubtful to play this week. Cleveland, you know they need this game. Consecutive road losses against the Denver Broncos and the LA Rams. In both those games, they were actually in. It was a 14-12 game, late third against the Denver Broncos, against the Rams. It was a one-point game with six, seven minutes to go. So they were in those games. Their strength has been at home this year where they were five and one in Jacksonville. Warm weather team, traveling to play in their first cold weather game of the season. I think that's a big aspect for me. Even with the Jaguars' undefeated road record of 5-0, and I'll take the Browns minus the three. All right, so I didn't match with you, so apparently I matched with Mike. So go ahead, tell us what, what we like early on to jump on, and we're not comparing notes. Uh, yeah, it's going to be Cincinnati and Indianapolis. We're going over the total. You could have this at 39 and a half this afternoon at 40 or 40 and a half now. Definitely play it before you get to that key number of 41 in an NFL game. Uh, I think this number is way too low. I make it all the way up to 44 and a half. I know that's a really big difference uh, when you look at this. But, EK, we talked about this last night ahead uh, of Monday Night Football. Jake Browning is not the average backup quarterback in the NFL, and he's stepping into a situation that is elite. He's got one of the best receiving cores in all of football with Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, and Tyler Boyd, uh, and then mixing, catching passes out of the backfield. A head coach that really believes in him. You saw that when uh, you know you get down to end of halves and end of game situations. They're, they're calling timeouts to give them options with 20 seconds left. Uh, this game is a must-win game on both sides in terms of playoff seeding overall. Uh, I think we see enough points here. Uh, when you look at Indy, they, they've routinely scored close to 30 or allowed that many. Uh, I love the over here. Yeah, I like both offenses to be underrated. You know, I mean, I talked about Jake Browning before last night's game. People accused me of thinking I was related to him. And, and and even he was even way better than I thought he was. I mean, you know, I, I but I know he is. I, I said that he's in that group of three or four best, best backup quarterbacks. I'm not telling you he's one of the top 20 guys, but he's as good as a backup quarterback's going to be. And he's efficient and he's smart and he looked good for the game and a half that they played. And I think he's good and he's got weapons and I think they're going to score. Plus, I do think that Indianapolis is going to be able to take advantage of the middle of the field, and that's how you can attack and score on Cincinnati. You saw what Cincinnati's defense was until Trevor Lawrence got hurt. They were a sieve. I think there's points here. And Gardner Minshew has a lot of gunslinger last two minutes of the half, coming out early third quarter. We may steal a touchdown there. It's not that high. It's not that high. I still just got a 39 and a half on FanDuel. I just played it over right now. That's the one I want to jump on because it's going to be gone if you wait. All right. Bills, Chiefs, and the home of the Chiefs. Two and a half on CBS. Look, Bills got to have it. They got the Chiefs in Dallas the next two weeks. They ain't catching Miami. This is it, man. They're rested. They're coming out of the bye. But they're also on the highway against a Chiefs team that is not feeling good and desperate. I'll be very honest. I'm not going to put this on my card, but I like the first half over. I kind of like the game under. I'm going to go early points and then hammer the second half under. But the first half over at 23 and a half. Rested offense in Buffalo. Bad defense in Buffalo. Patrick Mahomes is a better first half quarterback we've seen. He's going to light them up. And Josh Allen is going to be loaded for bear. Give me over 23 and a half in the first half. And then at halftime, I'm going to bet the under for the second half because I think they'll settle. Zach Simony. 
I'm going to go with the side here. I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills plus two and a half. A lot of concerns with this Kansas City Chiefs team, not just from an injury standpoint. Offensively, we know they have looked limited prior to that Raiders game. We know their second half struggles in terms of points, and this is causing Patrick Mahomes to have uh, Mahomes non-like games. He's thrown for three of the past four games, 210 yards, 177 yards, 185 yards, and that's a big concern considering they're going to face another team that has extra rest advantage, just like the Green Bay Packers did this past Sunday against Kansas City Chiefs. They had three days extra rest from uh, playing on Thanksgiving. Now the Bills come in off a bye in a must win, as you said, EK. I'm going to take the Bills plus the two and a half. All right. Um, you see it that way, Mike, or you got a different play on this? Uh, I'm leaning the other way. I'll play Kansas City at two and a half. I, I would make the number three and a half. I'd have a lot of interest in the Bills at four. I think a lot of people obviously would. Uh, so what I'm saying there is I think it's going to be a competitive game back and forth here, uh, like it usually is when these two get together. But I think the difference this time around is Kansas City is actually much better defensively this season. Uh, I also think Rasheed Rice is emerging as that option for Patrick Mahomes. I think he's going to lean on him in this particular game. So I like Kansas City with their backs against the wall a little bit here. I know Buffalo, obviously, is very much a must-win game on their side. Uh, but coming off of a loss, one of the better home field advantages in the league, uh, I think it should be on the other side of three. So anything less than that, I will go with Kansas City. All right, last one. Eagles-Cowboys, big game in the NFC. Um, you know, the Eagles can kind of get really close to slamming the door because their schedule gets easy on, on having the, the, the road to the Super Bowl and the NFC run through Philly. But they are underdogs. This opened at like one and a half. It's now up to three and a half off the fact that Philly got smacked down here. Um, I'll go first and get out of the way. I like the first half under. I can't believe it's 26 and a half. This is a division game. Both teams desperate. Eagles have just, you know, they didn't run for any yards. Here it comes. Here comes the run. And the run moves the clock. If the Cowboys basically don't pump it in the, ho- in the end zone every time they get in the red zone, this is going to go under in the first half. Under 26 and a half, that's where I am. you got to get three touchdowns and two field goals to beat me. Basically, you got to score every drive. I'll go under in the first half. Michael. I'm going over for the full game here. I know it's a robust total. Uh, I don't think either team can stop the, the other side. And I think the Eagles are going to have a ton of success offensively playing in the dome in a controlled environment. But I think Dallas is going to be able to answer step for step each way. I do lean a little under on the big number in the first half. I think much of it comes in that third quarter, a lot like we saw in the San Francisco game with Philly last week. Uh, Both of these teams end up in shootouts very frequently. Now you're removing all of the potential elements that you get into this time of the year. I I think it's just too many athletes on the field, too many high-powered offensive weapons i don't think the defenses are good enough here so i'm going to play the over despite the big numbers i think one team does approach 35 plus yeah i think we can both win i I have no problem with that that's going to be a flip for me i'll play the first half under and at halftime i may go and go play the second half over zach what do you say i'm also attacking the over full game over 52 and a half i know it's rare to see this type of high total in an NFL game, even in a divisional game, but I don't I just don't think the defenses are gonna be able to stop each other. We saw Seattle have their way against that Dallas secondary. Philadelphia defense, they gave up six straight scoring drives to the San Francisco 49ers and none of them were field goals. All were touchdown drives. So I think Philadelphia off a rare loss is going to be more aggressive. They could have had a 14 nothing lead against that 49ers team, but the offense was stagnant a little bit just got off to a six to nothing lead and so they'll be more aggressive and i think dallas their offense has been so fluid this year i don't see that stopping this week give me over 52 and a half all right there you go well done gents certainly appreciate everything that you're doing for us and you want more we have more all zach's picks all mike's picks all my picks we're all in one spot sportsline.com slash join sportsline.com slash join put the promo code ek wins you get 60 percent off ek wins get you 60 percent off ek wins 60 percent off Oh, yeah. What a fun hour. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Same time, same place, same channel, same seats. And we'll continue just winning, 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 and rolling, rolling, rolling. Till then, I'm Eric Casilius. Have a wonderful rest of your day.